This is the brand new 2023 Harley Davidson Nightster Special and it basically takes the regular Nightster which was new for last year and adds a few nice little upgrades to bring it up to a much more feature laden spec. So in this video we'll go through all of the details and find out is this the better buy or is the regular Nightster still the one to go for? Now, of course, these two bikes have plenty in common, and we'll start with the engine. It's the 975T variant of the Revolution Max platform. This is a big departure from the air-cooled V-twins that powered the Sportsters that the Nightster range effectively replaces. And I will admit, there is quite a big trade-off in terms of character. It just doesn't have that chugging, vibey, talky feel of the Sportsters, but more of a modern and refined delivery that's much more akin to something like a KTM or a Ducati liquid-cooled V-twin. Now the benefit of course of moving over to liquid cooling is that they can now pass the emissions regulations which pretty much killed off the Sportsters here in Europe but also it revs up a lot more freely and actually makes some decent top end power. So you've got 90 horsepower peak up at 7,500 RPM and at the same time it still maintains some of that low to mid range grunt that you'd expect from a cruiser with a healthy dollop of 95 newton meters at 5,000 RPM. Certainly, these liquid-cooled Harley engines are gonna take a little bit of getting used to, and the sound and the emotive vibes of the air-cooled engines will certainly be missed. But if you look at them in isolation, without comparing them to what went before, but rather what else is available on the market, then they do look pretty decent and make competitive power figures. Now one complaint I did have about the base Nightster when I rode it on the launch last year was that the throttle response was a little bit too snatchy, especially in sport mode, and it sort of unsettled the bike and felt a bit clumsy mid-corner. Now I'm not sure if they've specifically addressed that, but it seems like they have because I find this bike much better and it's not really a noticeable problem anymore. Now the other thing that's a little bit unusual about this bike, certainly for a Harley anyway, is the location of the fuel tank. So Previously, it would have been up here on all of the Sportsters and pretty much any other bike, but this, despite the fact that it's metal, is actually just an airbox cover, and the fuel tank's located sort of down here, and you fill it up by flipping up the seat, and the filler cap's just there. Now, it does probably look a bit odd when you're filling it up, but the benefit is that all of the weight of the fuel is held nice and low, and that gives the whole bike a low-slung center of gravity, which helps give it this very planted feel out on the road. On top of that, you get a little more fuel capacity as well. So it's 11.7 liters, which is not massive, but it's certainly better than some of the old Sportsters, which could be as small as sort of like eight liters. Now, as well as that weight being held pretty low, the whole bike is actually pretty slender. So 211 kilograms as shipped 219 in running order so that's basically their dry and wet weights and for context you know some of the old sportsters would be more so up around the 250 kilograms mark as a result because of the way the weight's distributed and the fact that it's pretty decent it's comparable with other sort of retro bikes i'd say this thing goes and turns and stops better than any other middleweight harley that i've ridden now the base nightster and the special get pretty much the same spec in this department so there's not a great deal to separate them brakes are from brembo you've got a single disc up front. Suspension is Showa with a right way up fork and twin shocks at the rear. You've got the typical sort of cruiser wheel sizes and the Dunlop tires which are cruiser specific as well. And look, none of it's ever really going to compete with like a super naked in terms of handling, but it's a pleasant ride even at a decent clip and it does pretty well through corners considering that it's safely in the cruiser genre. Now before we get on to the next one, I just want to say a massive thanks to today's video sponsor and that's Quadlock. Mounting your phone on the bars is the quickest and easiest way to add navigation to your bike and for me quadlock make the best motorcycle phone mounts in the business on my personal bike i use a range of their products so i've got their handlebar mount pro which is cnc aluminium and looks super premium i use their vibration dampener which helps to protect your phone's camera from those unwanted harmful vibes there's a wireless charging head so if your phone is wireless charging compatible you don't need to worry about keeping it juiced up and also you can run that to your battery with their smart power system that will deliver that power but also switch off when the bike's not running to make sure it doesn't drain your battery. Then when I'm out riding in the wet, I use their rain poncho. And despite the fact that many phones are now waterproof, it does stop you getting unwanted taps and interruptions on the touchscreen of your phone. Plus they've got a whole ecosystem of other great mounts. So things like desk mounts, car mounts, bicycle mounts, armbands for when you go out running. And so you should be able to find a mounting solution to fit every use case. Genuinely, I love Quadlock products and you'll find a link in the description to their 
their website where you can find them all. And down there, you'll also find a discount code specifically for my viewers. So once again, a massive thanks to Quadlock for their support. And with that, back to the bike. Now, where the two models do start to diverge though is with the riding position. And although you do get the same mid position foot controls and the seat position is the same as well, this bike actually gets five inch risers for the bar. And that means that they're two inches higher up and an inch further back towards the rider, which gives it a much more laid back and upright and commanding riding position. Now, on top of that, you also get the passenger seat and passenger pegs as standard on this Nightster Special, whereas the base Nightster model comes as a solo setup and you'd have to spec these as accessories at an extra cost. So I think the new bar position sort of accurately reflects the intended use of this bike because if you're riding two up, you're not gonna be pushing quite as hard as perhaps if you're riding solo, where you actually might wanna be up and over the bars a little bit more. Really, it's up to you as to what style of riding you actually think you're gonna be doing the most. But for me, I think I quite like the idea of two up riding on a bike like like this because I'd choose like a sporty naked or something like that for quicker riding. But a chilled out cruise with someone on the back sounds like a nice way to spend time on a bike of this nature. And it is nice and low at the back, which makes it super easy for a passenger to hop on and off. Generally, I find this bike super comfortable. In fact, it kind of surprised me with just how comfy it is. It's a nice wide bar position. The pegs are in a nice spot. It's a comfy seat. And really, I've only got one niggle with the ergonomics and that's the foot controls specifically the gear shifter. It sort of goes up and back a bit rather than just straight up like on other bikes. And that means you kind of have to hook your foot down and then up and then pull it kind of back to shift up. And it's a, a natural feeling to me and makes it quite tricky to use. Now, maybe it is something that you could get used to, but I think if I owned one, I'd be looking online for something to remedy that. Now, the other big differentiator between the base Nightster and this special is the technology package. You see the regular Nightster gets a pretty simple analog dash with a digital readout in the middle. And while it does get three riding modes of sport, road and rain that all vary the throttle response and engine braking and traction control and ABS, you know, that's pretty much it on the tech front and it's quite basic in the cockpit. This bike though gets a round TFT display, which you might recognize from the Sportster S, and that actually opens up a lot more functionality. So on top of the three riding modes, you've got two custom slots that allow you to dial it into your exact preference. Clearly you need a TFT display to make those changes to the settings. You've got far more buttons on the switch gear as well to help control it. And then also you've got the Bluetooth connectivity features that allow you to pair the bike with your phone, and that allows you to control music and calls and also, access navigation features through the Harley app. Plus, you get cruise control on this bike, which isn't even, I don't believe, an accessory option on the base model. And so for me, on a bike of this style, I don't mind too much about the custom riding modes. The connectivity, you know, you can make do without it if you're willing to mount your phone on the bars to navigate. But certainly for a laid back, easy going cruising style of bike, personally, I'd really want to have cruise control. Also, it gets their tire pressure monitoring system as standard, which again, not essential, but all these little conveniences do add up. Now you do also have a few differences visually. So primarily the wheels with a slightly more premium looking design to the cast rims on the special. And they're also finished in silver, which I think give it a slightly more traditional look that I quite like. And there's also a difference with the logo on the tank, which again gives it a little lift. And then you also get the headlight nacelle as standard on this bike, which is no longer the case on the standard Nightster. Along with that, you've got these cylinder head infills and one looks more accessorized and busy, while the other looks a little bit more stripped back and sporty. For me, I quite like this one, but it is a question of personal taste. So let me know your pick down in the comments. But ultimately, this buying decision could come down to a question of budget, and there is quite a significant price difference. So the standard bike starts at 14,195, whereas this special comes in at 15,395. And with both models, there's a 375 quid premium if you want anything other than the basic black paint. So that's 1,200 quid on top for the Nightster special, which I think if you're just looking for the the basic riding experience, you want a good engine and chassis in a cruiser style package, then perhaps it might not quite be worth it, especially if you're mainly going out and riding solo. But look, if you're thinking of riding two up, then specking the passenger seat and pegs is already gonna make up a good chunk of that. And then you've got all the extra finishing parts on top and all that functionality that that new dash offers. And so if you're thinking of going further afield and maybe doing some light touring and you think you'll make use of that, then it's quite easy to justify that price difference. Like 
can say for me, the appeal of a bike like this is to do that two up riding and some sort of chilled out, easy cruising, a little bit of light touring. And so for me, I think it'd have to be the special, but as always, I'd love to know which bike you'd pick down in the comments below. So do let me know. And also, if you haven't seen my review of the Base Nightster, which I shot at the launch in Spain last year, I'll link to it on the screen so you can watch it now. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.